Welcome to the Getting Started with Data Loss Prevention video tutorial. During this brief video, I'll define data loss prevention, explain how to set up and use data loss prevention, and discuss how data loss prevention and WatchGuard Dimension work together to keep you informed about the protection of confidential information on your network. Some network users, based on their job roles, may require access to sensitive information, such as financial data, healthcare records, employee information, and so forth. Data Loss Prevention, or DLP, is a subscription service from WatchGuard that gives you the ability to protect sensitive data in real time while still allowing everyone else to do their jobs. Because DLP is a fully integrated security subscription for your Firebox, it provides an easy-to-manage, cost-effective solution without additional hardware to purchase and maintain. DLP can detect data in more than 30 file types, and it works with your proxy policies to scan different types of traffic. With DLP, you configure sensors to define the content you want to detect and what action you want DLP to take if the content is found. Each DLP sensor includes rules to define the types of data to match and actions that specify what to do when the sensor detects matching content. You can also control how DLP will handle content that can't be scanned, such as password-protected email attachments. When you configure DLP, you can create your own sensor or you can use one of the two built-in sensors, which can help you comply with the HIPAA or PCI data security standards, common in the United States. To learn about the kinds of information DLP can detect, you can look at the list of DLP rules on the WatchGuard security portal. Let's take a look. The rule name is the name of the DLP rule as it will appear in your DLP configuration. The region identifies the geographic area the rule applies to. Why is the region important? Because many DLP rules are customized to match content based on the language and data formats common in specific regions. The Tags column shows the category of data matched by each rule. The description is a short summary of the text patterns the DLP rule looks for. Each DLP rule also has something called a default quantity, which can be tricky to understand. What the default quantity really is, is a measure of the weighted number of matches a rule must find in a file in order to consider it a DLP violation. This can cause confusion for some people because it's a weighted number, not a literal match. Finally, here you can see the Confidential Document Markers rules for different regions. Notice that rules for different regions match text in different languages. You have two options for setting up DLP sensors. You can clone an existing sensor or create a new sensor from scratch. In this demo, I'll clone a DLP sensor so we can take a closer look at the possible configuration settings. It is not possible to edit the built-in sensors, but you can clone them. In Policy Manager, open the Data Loss Prevention dialog box, like this. Select this checkbox to enable DLP. For this demonstration, I'll clone the PCI Audit Sensor. The Rules tab contains a list of all the DLP content control rules. Rules cover personally identifiable information, financial and healthcare data, and more. This is where you can select which rules to enable for the sensor. Each of these rules uses a set of conditions to identify content in a file. The DLP rules are based on a DLP signature set provided and maintained by WatchGuard. I can filter this list to see the rules enabled for this sensor, like this. Here I can see that the PCI Audit Sensor uses these three rules to identify credit card data. To configure the actions for this sensor, I need to go to the Actions tab. Here I can define the action I want DLP to take when the sensor finds content that matches the selected rules. By default, the action in this built-in sensor allows content that matches the rules and creates a log message. You can define multiple actions in a single sensor. Each action applies to traffic from a source to a destination. Each action has two parts, an action for content detected in non-email traffic and an action for content detected in email traffic. Use this tab to see the settings that control how to handle files that cannot be scanned because the content exceeds the scan limit, a scan error occurred, or the file is password protected. You can also change the scan limit here. I'll leave these at the recommended default settings. 
Because I didn't change anything in this sensor, I'll click Cancel. If I had made any changes, I would need to save the configuration file to my device in order for the changes to take effect. Imagine my company wants to make sure employees aren't sending out confidential company information, intentionally or accidentally, but the built-in DLP sensors don't exactly meet the company's needs. The solution? Create a new sensor from scratch. I'll start in Policy Manager, navigate to the Data Loss Prevention dialog box, and then click Add to start the Data Loss Prevention wizard. The wizard will create the sensor and help enable the DLP sensor for several proxy policies. If a policy doesn't exist, the wizard can create it. First, I need to give this sensor a name. The sensor I'm going to create will look for confidential documents, so I'll name it Confidential. This dialog box shows existing policies in the configuration file for which I can enable DLP. As you can see here, my configuration already has these proxy policies. I'll select the checkboxes to enable this DLP sensor for each one before I click Next. This is where you can have the wizard create new proxy policies that use this DLP sensor. I want DLP to scan content in FTP traffic, so I'll select this checkbox. The wizard will create an FTP proxy policy and enable this DLP sensor in the policy. Now I need to select the content control rules for the sensor. I want to detect documents that are classified as confidential. To find rules that include confidential in the name, I can type the word confidential here. Here are the rules that look for confidential markers that are common in different regions. To narrow down this list a bit, I'll select my region and then begin configuring actions for the sensor. You can select more than one sensor in this list, but to keep things simple, I'll only select one. This is where to configure the actions DLP will take when it detects content in email and non-email traffic. To have DLP monitor sensitive content without blocking it, you can accept the default action, which is allow. I want a more aggressive approach, so I'll have DLP drop the traffic if it identifies content that violates my rule. To add this DLP sensor, I need to click Finish. I can see here that my sensor has been added and applied to the policies I selected. On the Policies tab, I can see a list of the policies. I can also change which DLP sensor is enabled for each policy, like this. Now my HTTP proxy will use the PCI Audit sensor instead of the Confidential sensor. When this message displays, click Yes so that your device automatically gets signature updates from WatchGuard. If any changes are made, the last thing to do is save the configuration file to the device. Before moving on, let's recap what we've covered so far. When adding sensors to DLP, you can either clone existing ones or you can create your own sensors from scratch. In addition, each sensor has rules that identify sensitive content you may want to keep safe. In the previous demonstration, I was able to find a rule that matched the way my company identifies confidential data. If that hadn't been the case, the best option would be to create a custom rule. To create a custom rule, let's go back to the Data Loss Prevention dialog box. The sensor I configured in the previous demonstration uses the Confidential Document Markers rule. I know from looking on the security portal that the rule scans for the words confidential, privileged, secret, and top secret. Because my company uses a different phrase to mark confidential documents, I can configure a custom rule and then enable it in the DLP sensor. I'll open the custom rule tab like this. I'll type the name of the custom rule here. And I'll name my rule internal custom rule. Now I can type the additional phrases I want this rule to look for, here. For this example, I'll type internal use only. With that done, I can go back to the Sensors tab and add the custom rule to the sensor I just created.
To quickly locate the new custom rule, I'll use the search field. To enable the rule, all I have to do is select this checkbox. Use this option to easily see which rules are enabled for the policy. As a side note, if you have any text in the search field, make sure to clear it before filtering your results. With the custom rule added, my sensor will search files for my custom phrase in addition to the phrases in the built-in rule I added before. Finally, I'll save the configuration file to the device in order for these changes to take effect. To see DLP in action, let's take a look at WatchGuard Dimension. With Dimension, you can prove the worth of your DLP investment as well as help ensure your company's HIPAA and PCI compliance. Dimension includes predefined reports that are automatically generated from the log message data from your Firebox devices, Fire clusters, and WatchGuard servers. To review the actions DLP has taken, in Dimension, navigate to the Services Reports, like this. Using Dimension along with DLP provides you, as a network administrator, with full visibility of the sensitive data moving across your network. All you need to do is make sure that you've correctly set up logging and that you've configured logging in the policies for which you've enabled DLP. As you can see, WatchGuard Dimension captures a lot of valuable information about network traffic. For more information about Dimension, see the WatchGuard website. If you want to verify that DLP is working without putting your sensitive data at risk, WatchGuard has created a test file that you can use for DLP testing. This Excel spreadsheet contains fictitious credit card and address information that will match any of the default credit card or address rules when scanned by DLP. To get the test file and see information about how to use it for testing, see the WatchGuard knowledge base. I'll include a link to the article at the end of this video. To learn more about data loss prevention, visit the WatchGuard website.